Yeah, so hey everyone. Um, we had a talk with Ben from Union Labs today. Um, he's been selected as the winner of the Contributor Showcase Initiative that we kicked off last month. Um, for people who might not know, the Contributor Showcase is like an initiative started by the IBC community to like highlight stories of developers who are um, like instrumental in the development and adoption of IBC. And it also seeks to like give a platform for the selected contributors to share their work with the broader IBC developer community. And it works on like a quarterly basis. So every quarter we select a contributor. And so for 2024 Q1, we've selected Ben uh, as a winner of this initiative. And yeah, we're happy to like be with him today to talk about not just his contributions to the protocol, but also about his background and what he's working on at Uni Labs. Um, so yeah, hey again, Ben. Um, yeah, it's nice to meet you. Um, yeah, so do you want to maybe just like kick things off by like giving like an intro of yourself, a background, like what were you doing before you started working on Union? How did you get into the space? Um, yeah, take it away. Hey, yeah, so uh, I uh, founding engineer at Union. Uh, we've been working for about a year now on uh, one, what we're building. Uh, before this, I was a software engineer at a previous company. Um, not too much interesting about that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty simple. Cool. Um, awesome. And so do, do you want to maybe like talk a little bit about what you guys are building at Union? Yeah, so uh, we're building... Uh, modular ZK and probability layer. Uh, we are, our main goal is extending IBC beyond Cosmos. Obviously Cosmos has done a great job of designing and specifying IBC within its own ecosystem. Uh, but our our main goal is uh, every chain connected to every other chain, uh, ideally through zero knowledge, because that is the like, most efficient, most secure way to do this. Um, and yeah, that, that's, that, that's our stick. Cool, nice. Um, yeah, and like just out of curiosity, what made Union want to like select IBC to use it to extend it to like all these new ecosystems connect like pretty much every chain? Like you said, um, you know, there's like so many other intra protocols and bridges out there, but what made you guys want to decide to like take IBC and run with it? So if you look at IBC's uh, white paper and like the very generic specification, it is truly like just the most uh like it's the most generic and extensible protocol to reuse on different chains obviously you have the ibc go implementation that is sort of the canonical reference implementation but uh, if you just follow the ibc spec it's very easy to implement it for other ecosystems other chains and have it be fully compatible with all other ibc compliant specifications the great thing about ibc is that when you do regular bridging anywhere, the greatest trust assumption you're going to get is the security of chains on either side. So the security provided by the consensus mechanisms, whether that's an L2 or a rollup, and maybe an optimistic rollup has slightly less security than you would have on something like just a standalone Cosmos chain or like Ethereum mainnet. Uh, the security that you get with IBC is the security, like the minimum security of either side of, of the connection. So you don't have any uh, reduced security or like say but by the bridge or multi-sig or anything like that. IBC itself cannot be hacked. Like the, the, the protocol itself, as long as either chain is secure, the protocol is secure. And then along with that, you have this very strong base layer of security. And then on top of it, you can build uh, any kind of generic message passing you want, which allows you to say, okay, we have built your underlying transfer protocol. Now, any application developer can come in and say, I have an application on Ethereum. I want to transfer that, like do some DeFi with that on Cosmos or whatever other ecosystem you want to connect to. And then they don't have to worry about, oh, is my underlying protocol secure? They just say, I just want to build a protocol on top. And then everything that they do is secured by ABC. Cool. Um, awesome. Yeah, thanks for the explanation. Um, so yeah, coming to like the meat of this discussion, I guess, which is to like talk about the GitHub issue that you uh, opened up on the IBC Go repo, I think it was. Um, 
and which is about the um, O2, the ICS2 client uh, routing issue, or to like make ICS2 a little bit more generalized, mm -hmm. and also to like improve aspects of the Wasm client module. Um, for those of you who, who might not be familiar, Wasm client module is basically like this feature that was released end of last year, I believe, and um, it sort of gives this Wasm VM where people can write like clients in any Wasm compatible language. Uh, before that, developers had to write their like clients in Go, um, and now you have like more freedom and more options there. Um, but yeah, uh, Ben, do you want to maybe like just um, talk about what this issue is about um, and like what the main points were, what the main pain points were that led you to um, opening the uh, this issue? Yeah, so obviously the issue is quite extensive and there's a lot in it, but the main sort of like the, the, the root of the issue, I guess, would be that uh, Cosmos chains currently assume, like in IBC Go, uh, assume tendermint on either end. Uh, this is being worked on, uh, removing assumptions of this to make IBC Go more generalized. But uh, at the time that we raised the issue, uh, you actually couldn't do WASM to WASM between two Cosmos chains because either one of the sides had to assume Tendermint on the other side. Uh, and I believe that is still the issue right now. But uh, the main, like, when everything's wrapped in the WASM wrapper, it makes it very difficult to write, like, relaying. I work mainly on the relayer at Union. Uh, so when you're trying to write a generic relayer that uh, communi can communicate with multiple different light client types on the same chain, two different chains, uh, you need to know sort of what the type of client you're communicating with is. So when you're doing a native Cosmos chain, it's easy. The client type is 07 Tendermint. But when you do the WASM, it's very confusing because every client type is 08 WASM. And there's no way to figure out what type of light client that wasm byte code is all you have is a code hash so you either need to store locally all the hashes of all known light clients because there's no way to query from the chain what the type of the client is it's just not part of the 08 wasm interface uh or we did a little bit of a hack where we just stored it directly in the byte code now we parse the byte code <laughs> which works uh but uh along with this it just makes it very opaque but also hard to extend because the 08 WASA module, uh, as mentioned in the issue, should just be a transparent, like it should know nothing about the, uh, like for the end user should not know that what they're calling into is a WASM client. Calling into a WASM client that's running a Tendermint client should be the exact same as calling into the native Tendermint client. The uh, the relayer, the end user, the, con the consumer of this should not, under should not have to know that, oh, it's actually being run in WASM. Oh, it's actually being run native. It should be completely, completely opaque. Uh, this is obviously uh, somewhat difficult with the current design. Uh, so my proposal was to sort of abstract the O2 client interface to allow for specifying, along with the uh, like the bytes of the WASM code, you specify a client type that that would be associated with. So if you wanted to, uh, say, connect to like an Ethereum chain or whatever, you could call this WASM bytecode is the Ethereum like client bytecode. You could call that the Ethereum like client, and then your client identifier would be Ethereum dash N for your client identifier. Uh, and along with this, uh, I also recommended removing the any wrapping, and because currently the internals of IBC Go use the any type as the routing, which then exposes implementation details of IBC Go directly into the protocol. And when you're on a more resource constrained environment, such as Solidity, which is what we work on mostly, uh, parsing protobuf and parsing strings is very expensive. Like it, we've managed to find ways to unwrap it or reduce the cost as much as possible, but it can be like hundreds of dollars to do like a naive protobuf encoding and decoding in Solidity. So if, and in, in our Solidity implementation, we also, uh, don't use any at all, again, because it's expensive. And then we just, in the relayer, do some unwrapping, rewrapping. And then again, in our light client, because everything we do is ETH ABI, so we have to parse ETH, ETH ABI, or parse part of re re-encode as ETH ABI to do the inclusion check, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but uh, the proposal was to remove this any wrapping, use this client type provided by the user, or it can be provided by the host module, 
uh, like in your Genesis, if you, if you want to have uh, 07 Tendermint be routing internally to the Tendermint native module, it would be the same interface as a light client uploaded with the client type. The only difference would be instead of routing to a native module, you would route to uh, the WASM module, which then would have that internal mapping of client types to code hashes and then call into the module directly, which would then also allow you to remove the uh, WASM wrapper types in the 08 WASM uh, protocol spec, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, it makes sense if you're using the types like the any as the routing internally within the client router, but uh, it, it's a little annoying to have uh, in our types internally, we have an any, which then wraps the WASM, which then wraps the actual type we want to want, want to read. And then that's what's forced to be stored internally in IBC Go. So then on the counterparty, we have to verify against that like doubly wrapped state, which again right. is more expensive, especially like in a resource constrained environment. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and you mentioned how like wasm to tendermint, like that seems to be fine, but wasm to wasm it creates an issue for you guys. Like what would yes. be a use case of that? Would that be something like Ethereum rollups to like L1 or something like that? Or honestly, the simplest use case would be deprecating the native tendermint module and mm -hmm. just having all what like clients be wasm. Uh, that would be an ideal future for uh, me personally. Uh, if you look at or we're not open source yet, but when you're able to look at our Solidity implementation, you'll mm -hmm. see that it's all uh, virtualized. We have no native modules because on the on EVM, like there's no way we're going to get a pre-compile added into GIF that contains IBC specifics. So right. everything's virtualized. Whereas in Cosmos Decay and IBC Go, we have this distinction between native modules and uh, virtualized ones, mm -hmm. which again is probably the reason that the design is the way it is, which makes perfect sense if you look at it from that perspective. Um, but it, if everything's virtualized, you don't need to do a chain upgrade and a hard fork just to upgrade your light client module. Right. You can like it just becomes a, a gov proposal and like, basically a cosm awesome client upgrade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so like coming back to the GitHub issue, also for like people watching the video, we'll link the issue like below the video so that you guys can check it out. Um, but like what changes are required from the IBC Go side to like solve some of the issues that you like mentioned um, around, you know, like the auto client or the wasm client aspect. Um, yeah. yeah. So basically it just, obviously oversimplifying uh, and I don't understand the intricate details of IBC Go but it would be a change from reading the type from the messages passed in via the any type URL to then instead uh, have an internal mapping of some human readable identifier, 07 Tendermint, Ethereum, whatever you want to call your client. And then that routes to a light client module, right. which implements like a light client interface with all the necessary functions. And then it just calls directly into that. And if that's the native module, it's simple. It's just native Go code. If it's the WASA module, that then contains another mapping of, oh, this goes to this code hash, this goes to this code hash, and then it calls into the VM with these, like it calls into those specific contracts. Right. Um, cool. And then you get to remove that uh, publicly facing uh, routing information via the any type URL, and you just pass in bytes. Mm -hmm. um, and like, wh what would you say will be like let's say you know this is implemented like a PI is open and it's merged. What would you say the benefits are of like implementing um, your suggestions, not just to like um, your team, but also to um, current and future users of the Wasm client module? Yeah. So I feel like uh, if this were to be implemented, it would make the O2 client module for one a lot simpler because currently you have this very big distinction between native modules, like the solo machine, all of that, they all do their own separate thing. And then you have the WASM module, which is sort of kind of shoehorned on top of all of that with these wrapper types just to make it fit into it. But if you go with the distinction of just a light client module, whether it's virtualized or native, doesn't matter, then you have a much simpler interface internally that you just call into a client. You just say, okay, uh, here's a message. Apparently, it's supposed to go to you, do your thing with it, and then it does all the parsing, it does all the validation, all of that for you. So the O2 client router 
it's essentially just becomes just a router. There's nothing else to it. Maybe a few validations here and there, but it, it doesn't have to do anything particularly fancy. All of that business logic is handled by the modules directly. Mm -hmm. Which when you look at a virtualized uh, example, like just a general Wasm light client, that's what it looks like it should be from the interface of the contract you're writing in the Cosm Wasm, oh wait, Wasm contract. But then there's still a lot of validations done between the O2 client router down through the Wasm module and a whole bunch of stuff, which is what makes uh, it difficult or currently not possible to do Wasm to Wasm directly because the, internally they cast to a tendermint client type or mm. I think it has been removed within the last week or two, actually, which is excellent. Okay. But uh, uh, it, there's some casting being done. So if all of that could be removed and all of that handled by the client module itself, then that's a lot, a lot simpler. Right. And also so, nicer yeah. from a perspective of relaying, which is, mm -hmm. I'm obviously a little bit biased there. Yeah. So would that be like the main pain point from a relay standpoint to be able to pass the client types? This would be like the main improvement. It would be a very nice improvement indeed. Uh, uh, obviously, you then run into different issues of different chains posting different uh, client types with the mm -hmm. same identifier. So right. you'd either have to come up with some sort of standard there or just accept that, yeah, you need to keep a little bit of a registry of like chain that client type is like chain like client identifier is this type, but it's a lot like cleaner than having to map Wasm bytecodes and like code hashes to a client type right because then on a client upgrade as well uh like if you want to upgrade a wasm client you, you the identifier doesn't change just the underlying bytecode so then that's opaque to the to the consumer and user same way as if you do like a native tendermint upgrade that makes sense um cool uh yeah i think that's pretty much all the questions but i guess like just final is there anything like ibc related work um, you know, apart from this that you're excited about right now, or like anything else that you'd like to mention about what you guys are working on at Union? Ah, uh, let me think. Uh, one thing that I'm interested to see the design space around is uh, relay incentivization. Uh, this obviously has been uh, a very long work in progress of properly designing it and making it so that it's cross-chain implementable, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, uh, I think I think that'll be a big step because currently relayers are funded and subsidized by the chains that they relay to and from, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't fully sustainable, in my opinion, uh, especially when you get to ecosystems that are a lot more expensive to relay to, such as Ethereum. Uh, but that's one space. Uh, another slightly related thing that we're waiting for is uh, async acknowledgments on Cosmosm, uh, which is required for uh, some uh like packet forwarding that we're trying to work on right now but that's coming soon so hopefully hopefully we can get that uh and other than that uh just stay tuned i guess lots of lots of cool things coming uh just like double clicking on the relay fee aspect are you guys planning on using um the fee middleware like ics29 or uh we're looking into different solutions right now um but currently we're also just subsidizing everything ourselves uh and getting uh fees directly from protocols uh, mm -hmm. like including like a, a fee, like in the ICS 20 packet, whatever for the relayer to then receive. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's still a somewhat, uh, like the, the design space still needs a lot of work and it'll be nice to, uh, contribute to this once we have cross ecosystem IPC. So it doesn't accidentally become Cosmos specific, like being written into the memo field when there's no memo field for Ethereum. Mm -hmm. We've hit this roadblock a few times. Okay. Don't they have like a data field or something last time I checked? Oh, uh, I it's not, well. yeah, it's not nearly as flexible as the uh, the memo field, unfortunately. Okay, okay. Uh, cool, well, yeah, I think that's that's about everything. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for jumping on this call. It was nice to meet you and nice to talk to you. Awesome, uh, thanks, you as well. Yeah, looking forward to um, like when Union launches. Excited for what you guys are working on. Thanks, me too. Cool. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers.